Hello and welcome to Digital Photo Mentor Live. I am Darlene. We were not here last week and I hope you all had a great Easter if that's something that you celebrate in your area. I know we stuffed ourselves with turkey and ham and a great family uh, dinner and played some cards. So I'd love to hear about your Easter weekend. Tell me in the chat. Um, did you have a big meal? Do you play cards? Do you play games? Uh, love to get to know you all a little bit better on a personal note. If you receive my email newsletters, you'll know that I've been putting something about me in every newsletter just to give you um, a little bit of background about who I am and what I'm all about. And I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Apparently it was the flower. <laughs> I'm allergic to pollen and uh, spring has me sneezing and allergy ridden. So funny that the flower is on the screen. Bahamas, Karen. Karen says, watching our granddaughter swim. Oh, very exciting. So um, a sports meet. That's fun. Debbie from Wisconsin. Is it Mikey or Mickey? Tell me, am I saying your, which one is correct? I'm guessing Mickey because you've got a Goofy <laughs> as your little icon. Spring-like in Sault Ste. Marie. It is here in Edmonton as well, Marguerite. Um, we ha actually had snow on Friday, quite a bit of it. And it's 13 Celsius today, so it's melting already. It's gone. It's gone. New Jersey. Yep, like Mickey Mouse. Okay, perfect. Uh, Rob sees Mickey Mouse everywhere he goes. He has a thing about seeing Mickey Mouse. He'll be, you could tell the story about seeing Mickey Mouse on, on Mount Everest or something, right, Rob? Burlington. Hi, Don. Welcome. Maryland. Julia. Bethlehem. I think we've actually been to Bethlehem, Mark. I remember some of the interesting names of towns in, um, Pennsylvania. St. Louis. Hey, Vivian. Well, we've got a lot of really cool flower images, and I want to do something a little bit different today when we get started here, um, is I'm going to go through some things about shooting, um, taking the photos, and some tips, as well as we'll, we'll give you some opportunities to vote on which ones I edit, and then I'm going to talk about how do I decide what I'm going to do to an image? And we're going to talk more about that this week than the actual editing, perhaps. So let me get out of my full screen here and hop over to Lightroom. Okay, so as you can see, I've got lots of great flower images. And many of you have submitted several. Um, I don't see Linda yet. Is Linda or Linda, are you here in the chat? Let me know because I've got like six images from Linda. Uh, Deb sent in one. I got an older one from Stephanie and I don't think we've done that one. Karen, I've got yours. Uh, Marty, Marguerite, um, you had sent some and a question about um, removing details. So I wanted to ask you about that one. Lucia. Hey, Lucia's here, Rob. Good to see you, Lucia. Hey, are you sure you guys don't want to come to Japan with me and Dan, Lucia? We're going to Japan and we only have two spots left. You guys could come with us. Um, okay. Let me get back to my topic here. I was just excited to see Lucia. She is in Brazil and she's been on a couple of tours with us. So we know Lucia quite well. The last one I think I saw her was, was India. That's why I saw you was India. It's been, it's been too long. It's been too long. Okay. So Marguerite, you had said, I'd like to know the best way to camouflage details that are hard to erase without leaving smudgy areas. So which image were you talking about? Was it one of these? Cause these are the images that you sent and I'm guessing it was this one on the left. Did you want to remove or blur or obscure the background details, right? And if so, we could do that a couple of different ways. We could do that using the lens blur tool in Lightroom, or we could, I'm going to turn my Exire off. I've got a new thing running here that um, 
I'm going to be doing a review on, which is Exire, and it's, I can give you a little sneak preview of it today, actually, um, where it actually scans your images and assigns keywords, but you can do really cool things like search and stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a full review of that. Um, uh, I'm off track today. <laughs> so which one was it you meant, Marguerite? Um, Sue says, or Lucia says dark background. Okay. I think they're both fairly dark. But which one did you want to obscure the details, Marguerite? The trillium. Okay, this one here on the, the left. Is this trillium? I'm sorry, I'm not up on my flowers. I'm not a good gardener. Lucia is watching on Facebook. Okay, so let's start with this one then, okay? Because if we look at the um, comparison of these two, and I put up the information, I'm going to guess we have a very different aperture. No, we don't. So that's interesting. So you would think, right, that this was f1.8 or something with a really shallow depth of field, okay? So what's the difference? Why is this one on the right so blurry on the background and this one is not? Um, it mostly has to do with how far away the background is then. My guess is that this one, also taken with a much longer lens, okay, is obscuring this background because of the long lens and the distance to the background. So that's something that I talk about is how to blur the background. So it's it's a big aperture, right? This aperture is slightly bigger than the other one, not much, 6.3 versus 7.1. And you're using a longer lens, okay? So also another factor in blurring the background and the distance to the background, which is the third thing. Oh, hey, Marty, I've got your images as well. And I took the flea bane against a gravel driveway with a 300 mil lens. Okay, so yeah, that's exactly what happened here, right? So you've got a simple background far away, right? This one has blurred the background. So to blur the background here, you could have done a similar thing. Use a longer lens on the Trillium. Okay, now I can see the names of them. <laughs> so thanks for naming the flowers for me. You could use a longer lens. Okay, so that would have helped. If you had zoomed in and backed up, that would have helped blur this background more. Okay, and open up the aperture a bit more, right? You can go to 5.6 on the top end of this lens. So shoot more wide open and you'll throw that background out. But let's see what we can do to answer her question about, okay, so now here we are. What can we do to blur this background? Okay, so I'm going to start. My mouse is doing very strange things here when we're live lately. I'm going to start with the basics, right? I'm going to start with a camera profile and landscape. Look at that. Whoo, beautiful, right? Look at that contrast, color, boom. I always start with the color profile because you can get so much closer to the end um, you of what you want to look like. Right, just by choosing the camera profile first. Okay, so the lens is the same, but the focal length of the lens is not. Okay, so even though it was the 70 to 300 lens used on both, they were not shot at the same focal length. Okay, so if I go back here into this mode here, okay, okay, so it's the 70 to 300. This is what I'm looking at here. Okay, so it's the 70 to 300. But this one was shot at 230 mil, and this one was shot at 95. So even though it's the same lens, that's what I mean by she. if she had zoomed in more on this one to 200 or so, you would have gotten more of this effect, okay? So same lens, but not same focal length, okay? Because it's a zoom lens. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to crop part of this out because these guys are right in the middle and I like this whole arrangement of three. Three things can make a really nice composition because you can have it, you know, unbalanced and so on. So I want to work with the composition a little bit and I'm going to go sort of off aspect ratio and just crop to what feels right. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about aspect ratio, but I want to get these guys kind of, they're, they're straight up and down right in the middle here. So I'm actually going to start by tilting it a little bit. So I'm going to just give it a little tilt and then get rid of some of this space over here on the right because there's there's nothing here, right? So I'm going to come in a little bit and then I might tilt it a little bit more. 
Okay, so I'm trying to get more of a diagonal, right? I'd love if there was more space over here, which we could add in Photoshop, right? We could take that and, and do generative fill and add some space there because look at, we've got these almost on the thirds now, right? So let's see how that looks. Sorry, my nose is sniffling. Um, okay, so I like that composition better. I'd like to have a little more space over here, but I'm going to work with this, okay? So already we've gotten rid of some of the distracting background. Okay? Now there's a couple of different ways that you can blur the background. I'm going to do a vignette um, for one. So that's just a preset that I applied that is darkening the edge, okay? And it's getting this flower a little bit, so maybe I'll bring it back just a bit. And I want to warm this up a little bit. It feels a little bit cool. So we could do that a couple of different ways. I could use the eyedropper on the white. Okay, see how that warmed it up? And then I'm going to do my shift double click trick to give me some more contrast. That looks good. And a little more black. Okay, so black enhances our color. Remember, the more black we have, the more color intensifies. Okay, so we're already way ahead of the game here. Okay, how's the background? Already looking minimized because I've darkened it. Okay, this spot here is still drawing attention and some of the other spots here. Okay, I'm going to brighten this up just a little bit here. There we go. Let's check our details, check the highlights. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now let's deal with this background. Okay, so we can do, I don't want to do clarity overall because this is a global edit. Remember, anything you do with these sliders applies to the entire image. So I don't want to um, give clarity to the entire image because it's going to overly sharpen the background as well. Right, watch what happens if I do that. Okay, so it's giving clarity to the background. Okay, it's doing a nice job on the flowers, right? So let's keep that in mind. Same thing with texture. So let's just see what Lightroom thinks is the background by a, choosing a mask. Okay, so let's just see what it thinks is the subject. Okay, so it's chosen part of this flower, part of this flower, but it's missed some. Okay, so we could go ahead and add that. Let's just let's just go and add. I'm going to do add object. And I'm going to paint over this flower and make sure that I've got these leaves like so. And I'm going to change this mask color because it's hard to see a green mask on green leaves. Okay, so I changed the mask color. Okay, so now I can see that these leaves are not being picked up. So I'm going to add again and I'm just going to use a brush this time. Where's my brush? Maybe I'll do auto mask. Okay. And I'm just going to paint in so I've got these leaves here and these leaves here. Okay, so I want the background to be the stuff that I want blurry. So these leaves should be okay. And whether or not I do these leaves is, is optional. Okay, I can choose that. Rob, I've got a cat doing something in here. She's probably going to want some food. Okay, now that I've got that selected as the flowers, I want to name it. And this is the one, this is where I want to now add the clarity. Okay, so that's under detail. Nope. Yes. There we go. I want to add the clarity. Okay, so see how that's bringing out the beautiful texture of those, those flowers? and some texture, okay? And now that I've done that, I might come back to the brush and actually lower the density a little bit so that I'm painting with less intensity on these leaves. Okay, so I've lowered the brush to 50%. So essentially, fading out the effect on these areas. So I want the flowers more sharpened than the leaves. Okay, so if we look at the overlay, it's still affecting that area, but not as much, okay? I'm gonna bring the clarity back down a little bit. 
that looks good. Now, because I have the flowers selected, I can, you can see the mask in there, right? It's partly faded. I can do duplicate and invert. So it's gonna give me the same mask, but opposite, which is what I want for the background, okay? Now I can do the opposite. I can lower the texture. Look at that, okay? Lowering the texture. I tend to not use clarity very much because it just makes things look sort of mushy, but I'll bring it down a little bit, okay? You can also bring the highlights down at the same time, and we can try and solve that little spot there. See that? I'm going to bring the shadows up. So that's actually lowering the contrast, okay? So I'm lowering the contrast, and I'm going to adjust the color as well because I feel like I feel like it's a little bit warm in the background. So cooling the background off, see that? If I lower the background, just cool it off a little bit because warm colors come out. So all of the things I'm doing to accent the flower are making it sharper, making the background blurrier, making the flowers warmer, making the background cooler, okay? Making the background blurrier and softer. So everything is opposite, okay? Cooler less detail, and so on, right? I'll deal with this bright spot a little bit differently, okay? Uh, we can also come down to detail and lower the sharpness, right? As well, dehaze. I find dehaze does a really nice job of fixing contrast issues. So if I lower the dehaze and then bring the exposure down, it just kind of softens the background a little bit. See that? Okay, maybe not quite so much. Where's my dehaze? Scale it back a little bit. Okay, so let's see what this is doing. So this is background. Let's see what the masks are doing. So that's before any masking and after. See the big difference? Now we still have some bright spots, but we can deal with those another way, right? So I can say, let's try the cloning and healing tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the healing tool at a lower opacity, okay? And I'm just going to draw over this area here that I want to darken, okay? Remember, I've showed this technique before. And I'm, I'm going to choose the source area as a dark spot up here. And when it fills, the higher you bring the opacity, the darker that fill in is going to get. Okay. So be careful of going over the edge of the leaf. Let's just see what happens. There we go. Okay. So now I've got a little bit of edge on the leaf that I didn't want to darken. Okay. But see how that's filling that spot in nicely? Then I can do the same here. Okay, so I don't have to have a perfect selection of it. I just want to get the large bit of it. And again, pick a dark area. I'm going to pick a dark area that's fairly smooth. Okay. And if healing doesn't work, try just the stamp tool. Okay. I definitely need to feather the edge a bit more because I could see the edge there. Did you see that? Let me zoom in. Okay, so when I had the edge feather low, can you see the edge there? You can actually see where I've painted, okay? So that's the sharp edge versus add the feather, increase the feather, it just softens that edge, okay? Let's see how that's looking. Let's see. Let's see if I increase it a little bit more. Maybe the feather is too high. So you just have to play with the settings a little bit or choose a different area. Maybe this area is too dark. Let's try, let's try filling it with green. And it looks like maybe I missed painting a certain area so I could paint better as well. All right, let's see what that does doing. See how it's just getting a little bit darker? Yeah, I've missed a spot, so I have to do a better paint job. So let's do this one again. I'm gonna get a bigger spot 
bigger brush and I'll go over the edges this time. Make sure I get the whole thing. Okay. And it even shows a green. Okay. So it shows a green. Let's increase it slowly. See how it's filling that area in with green? I'm not sure if I want green. I think I want more of a dark brown. Right? So let's choose something from up here. Keep it in the image. See the before and after. So that's how you can use this cloning tool. Okay. Cloning and healing. I'm using the stamp tool. Let's try the clone. Let's try healing instead. Healing usually just blends a little better. Still pretty green. And if I don't get something I like, I have a spider on my desk, Rob. <laughs> he just came from the ceiling. He's now on the desk. Right? If you don't get something you like this way, then we can take it into Photoshop as well. All right. I'm going to close that tool. And now, where's my thing? Now I'm getting this little red dot here. This comes up often, and I don't know why. The spider's on my desk. You might have to come and get the spider because he's going to get me, Rob. He's going to get me, seriously. He's right there. He's coming to get me. He's coming up the cord. There might be female screaming happening because I do not like spiders. Hi, Lee. Okay, so if you get this little red thing, I'm looking at the spider. I'm sorry. Rob's coming to get the spider. <laughs> right, so if you get this little red thing here, it means that you have to update the masks. And it's not giving me that option here. So you have to go in here and choose update AI masks. Okay. So what that means is it's got something going on where it needs to reanalyze the image. Okay. So where we had it choose the subject, that's the AI portion. Okay. He's in there somewhere. I'll just turn my camera off for a moment while uh, we'll just go full screen. There we go. So Rob's coming to get the spider. He's he's in amongst the cords somewhere, and I don't know where he is. You have to move it around, and you'll see him. Oh, there he is. I see him. He's in, no, he's in there. He's in there. There, he's he's right there. He's right there. Right where? On the gray cord, right there. He's right there. Do you see him? Nope, no spider. He's in there. <laughs> he's in there, no I'm telling idea. you. Okay, well, now he's going to get me. We've lost the spider, All right. you guys. He might, All right. He might get you. He's going to get me. All right. The spider's coming to get me, but I'm going to carry on anyways. Rob's going to keep looking for him. Okay, so uh, we've updated our masks, and I could close the masks again. Okay, there we go. So now let's see where we're at before. And after is that getting closer to what you were thinking marguerite in terms of blurring the background if not we have another option here in lightroom before we try something else right we can also take it over to luminar right yes our cat does find spiders karen and eats them so yeah i don't know but it's cat food time and they've probably just had their lunch so flying, she's, flying raisins too yeah she um she catches flies in midair as well. Oh, there's this, there's one cat here, but she's not the spider eater. Okay. Let's go to the lens blur tool. And I am doing a video for the Lightroom course on these updates. And I'm, um, I apologize for being late on this one, but there is an update to the Lightroom course coming on these new things, including this lens blur. So let's just click apply to turn it on. <laughs> He's a friendly neighborhood spider. Well, he's not Spider-Man. I, I really don't know where he went. I've got some papers here on my desk and then cords, lots of cords, and he's gotten lost in there somewhere. Uh, Marguerite said, I tried getting rid of the stick and Luminar smudged it up. Okay. You mean this stick back here? Okay. So we could try that in Luminar then if you want me to try it in Luminar. Um, but try this lens blur because what's happening with the lens blur is you can literally tell Lightroom which parts to blur and I could just paint in the stick, right? So visually, 
the part that's sharp is is the lightest part and then it falls off to blurry uh, which is purple so i'm going to turn the blur up so we can really see what's happening okay now uh, it's not blurring this stick right now but we can do a few different things with these settings here i get the spinny wheel because this this blur tool takes a lot of resources and hopefully it doesn't crash my computer so i'm hesitant to even use it but if we bring the depth of field in a little bit it's going to start to blur the stick okay we can also paint in some additional blur okay so we can say lightroom i want this to be more blurry by painting it in <clears throat> i'm for the spider because i don't know where he went he's freaking me out if dan was watching <laughs> lucia are you watching because dan had to save me from spiders more than once okay so i'm going to do blur and then i can paint in blur into the stick here i get the spinny wheel again all right, so I'm painting in blur like this, okay? I got the spinning wheel again. So I don't, I don't wanna use this tool for much because I'm hoping it's not gonna crash on me. Um, it's a little bit finicky. I'm not a super fan of this tool, but if I'm not doing a live video, it works okay. Right? So I wanna close this tool out as soon as possible here, but let's take a look at what it's doing. Okay, it's it's giving us a, a blur. Getting the spinny wheel again. <laughs> Maybe the spider came from the flower. See this flower, see how I blurred, I, I painted this in with blur. So I could paint more blur. You can have this, this visualization on while you're painting. So I could paint more blur right here. And you could tell it, yes, I want more of this blurred, right? So I really want to get this tool closed. Keeps giving me the spinny wheel of, of death, the max spinny wheel of death. What technique did you try in Luminar, Marguerite? Because we could, we could, I want to turn this off and then we're going to try the same thing in Luminar, okay? Yeah, this tool is this tool drives me crazy. So one of the reasons it's in early access, you'll see it now I've made a big mess because the blur is not even right. So it's really blurry up there. And I should have, you know, masked it a little bit better. So I need to put the focus back. So it's a big mess. And <laughs> I don't want to use this tool too much. But let's see. That's what it looked like before and after okay so it's doing a nice job on the rest of the background right but i just need to work on the tool there a little bit so i'm actually going to unapply this one because you did it in uh i tried to erase the stick in small portions so i think instead of trying to erase it <coughs> let's just try to blur it okay as well as the background so i'm going to take this entire thing over to luminar because flowers work really well adding a nice softening effect at the end and that's that um my favorite filters which is the mystical or the orton effect and you can't do the same nice softening in lightroom there really just isn't a tool that does that right so i'm going to take this to luminar there we go let's fill the screen i'm going to take this to luminar actually i might change the cropping just a little bit Give it a little bit more space. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so let's go to, I'm going to go directly to Luminar. Um, normally I would do, actually, no, I'm going to go to Smart Object. Okay, so Smart Object in Photoshop. So that's going to take me to an intermediate step, which is from Lightroom to Photoshop, then to Luminar, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because if I don't have success doing the blur or the erasing in Luminar, I still have the ability to do that in Photoshop, okay? So the erase tool in Lightroom is limited, like the cloning and healing tools, as we saw, they're limited. Luminar actually has better tools for erasing, um, but Photoshop is still the best, okay? So Photoshop still is the best tool for 
advanced things like removing stuff, right? Um, you could have also tried to remove the stick using Gen Erase. Did you try that, Marguerite, inside of, of Luminar by applying um, one of the generative tools? And I won't be able to do that from here. I'd have to open it as a, a source tool. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, now where's my layers? Let me just move my Photoshop tools around. Okay, so we could even try that in here, right? Like if you select something in Photoshop, right? This is the simplest way to remove something, but of course you're you're using generative fill then and just enter a prompt. So I could just say background or blurry forest or something, but I'm just gonna hit enter because it's going to then fill it with what it thinks works there. We could also just use content aware fill, okay? Um, and content aware fill doesn't use the, the AI technology, right? So it's now given me three options. There's my properties okay, to fill in this spot. So it looks like the stick just sort of ends, which is weird, right? So it's coming from nowhere. So it's a little bizarre sort of having it in, but that's not bad and it's blurry. So that's not bad. I could probably work with that, okay? So I might go with that one, but I'm gonna undo that just to show you how to do it the other way. So a couple other options, okay? I don't know why I got a text layer, but let's just delete that. Okay, so if we want to try this in Luminar, because we could try the blur tool first, right? Just like we did the lens blur, okay? I can take this into Luminar as a smart object. So Skylum and Luminar, okay? So use all the tools at your disposal. All right? And I believe, uh, Marguerite, you use all of them, right? You have Lightroom Classic and Luminar, which means if you have Lightroom Classic, you also have Photoshop, right? Uh, which of my courses do you have, Marguerite? Do you have um, do you have my Photoshop class? Do you have the Lightroom one? She says, I haven't tried Luminar's generative tools, but I did try Photoshop's. Okay, so like the one that I just did, right? We can also use content aware fill and I'll show you how that one works. But let's just see if we can blur it, right? So instead of erasing things, uh, especially in this case, like it, it needs this, you'd have to erase the stick here as well, right? So let's just see what happens if we just blur it. So let's go straight to the blur tool and we could just use Gaussian blur, which is, a, you know, this type of blur, okay? I don't think motion, we could try tilt shift actually. Actually, that's kind of nice. Okay, so look what's happening here. So with the tilt shift, what it's giving you is focus wherever this center dot is, okay? So I could put focus on the flowers like this, okay? And then you can see that it's actually blurring the foreground and I can adjust where the blur starts, okay? So make sure I get the flowers like so. Now it is blurring this one, but maybe that's not so bad. Maybe we wanna let it just go out of focus, okay? Let's see what it's doing. Let's go a little farther. So see how it's actually blurring the foreground and the background here? Right? Now, if I don't want it that blurry in around this flower, we can mask it as well. Okay, so let's just see what happens if I do AI masking and see if it finds the flowers, right? Because it does have um, natural elements, right? It should find flora, because I believe that's one of the options, one of the elements. Let's just see. I've forgotten about the spider. I have no idea where he went. He's probably going to get me. <laughs> okay, so it did find flora. So let's just see. Eh, it's finding everything. Okay, so we're gonna have to do uh, paint it in. So if I want to get the effect, I need to fill this first. Let's fill, let's clear it and fill it. And then let's just erase the parts off the flower, okay, that I don't want blurred. So we can just erase it off of the flowers. Make sure these guys are sharp. 
the whole thing. Okay, and then lower the strength and let's just let the foreground go a little bit out of focus. How about that? It's actually kind of nice, right? So the corner here is even a little blurry. So it's doing a nice job on the stick. Okay, so we don't have to remove the stick. We're just kind of minimizing its effect, right? Now, if that's not enough blur, we can do some more. We can also use the older tools that people forget about, Structure AI, for example, and go to a negative, right? We could also use that and then just paint it into the background. So that's another option. Or details, right? So remember, if you take details, negative, it also blurs, right? So we can do things like putting this and getting rid of some of these things. So we could just mask this in where we want it. Okay, so I just want to get rid of some details there. Maybe these sticks in the middle here, right? Too much detail. Stick again, right? So I'm just minimizing the details of the stuff that we don't want. And then at the end of the day, if there's anything left that's bothering us, then we can erase it, right? So I'm trying to use the other tools first before I go to erase, right? So give that a try. So now I've just got this one bright spot. And I think this would be actually easier to clone out in Photoshop. So I'm gonna leave that there and bring that back to Photoshop. Oh, I'm gonna supply the mystical. Let's do, where is it? Oh, it's in my favorites, of course. So let's do mystical. I like that. We can warm it up a little bit. We could even apply a lot while we're in here, but I think that's good. Okay. So then let's take this back to Photoshop. We could also apply a vignette, which might help. And I'm just going to use a cloning layer, okay? A cloning and healing layer. So what I call a retouching layer um, as a blank layer. And the reason I do that as a blank layer in Photoshop is that it keeps a file a little bit smaller. You don't have to duplicate the layer to clone on it, okay? Here's our layers. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to call it retouching. You can see Luminar Neo was applied as a smart object. And here's my blank layer, okay? So now all I have to do is get the stamp tool or the healing tool. Uh, let's do the healing tool. Okay. Let's get this one. Okay, so this one means that I have to select an area to clone from. Okay, so I'm going to go from here. It's set to darken, okay? And then I'm just gonna go like that and it should fill it in, okay? Let's actually go with stamp tool. Stamp tool, darken, because I can adjust the opacity of this one. Okay, so I'm gonna clone or stamp from directly beside. The brush is soft, okay, hardness is turned down. So I'm gonna clone from here over to here, just at 30%. And all that's doing is just bringing that little bit of darkness into that area. See that? So I'm just kind of fixing that bright area. Any of these little spots, right, I can do the same. So I can even do this area here with a little bit of brown. especially on the corners. I like to keep the corners of the image dark. And let's see, I've made a line now. Let's just keep going. There we go. Okay, so let's just keep going with that. And this area here, I'm gonna clone from over here. So you don't have to clone right next to it or I can even come from up here. So I'm gonna go from here and just clone down. And it went green on me, so I don't want the green per se. Always changing where I'm cloning from, okay? 
And then if I make a mess, like I did right there, I can go to the cloning and healing or the healing brush and just fill it. Yeah, that one didn't work either. Content aware. Let's do proximity match. So the type of blend mode. Yeah, that was not working for me either. Patch tool works great too. So patch tool, you have to drag a little circle or draw a section. Oh, I can't use the patch tool on a blank layer. I forgot about that. <laughs> so we can't use a patch tool. Uh, let's try this other cloning one. Let's try this one. Okay, so it's cloning from up there. It's giving me a weird edge for some reason. No, oh, it's got a hard, maybe the spacing. It's giving me a weird edge. Yeah, see that? It's not blending properly. So I would do a little bit more work on this. But use the different tools at your disposal, right? So I did what I could in Lightroom to minimize it. And that's where we're at now, okay? So while we're here, if we want to add some more space in front of the flower, that's super easy to do in, in Photoshop, right? All I have to do is get to the edge here. All I have to do is use the crop tool and expand it and it will fill, right? Generative expand and I just have to hit enter and it will fill with what it thinks. Oh, it has to do the plugin because of the smart object. Whenever you have a smart filter, it's going to go reapply that every time you do something um, to the image. So it's reapplying this. Now it's generating and we'll have some choices in a moment. So far the spider's not getting me. I don't know where he went. Okay, so there's one choice. Oh, interesting. Look, it made a leaf. <laughs> you don't want that. I think the darkest one. That's the best one, right? So you can see what it's doing. It's it's made a weird light line here, right? So I might just go through again and do another generative fill on this one. Or I can just go move my retouching layer to the top, which is what I did here and just do the cloning again. So I can just clone in from here to darken. It's got this weird edge, right? There we go. The whole idea is you want your retouching, I've kind of made a mess again. You want your retouching to blend and look realistic. And so I'll keep going. I would might change this to normal instead because I'm getting a weird blend here. I just want this to blend so it doesn't look cloned or created, okay? How's that? Better, right? Still the stick is there. Is it minimized? Yes. Can we minimize it some more? Sure. Let's just do a quick clone over at 30%. I'm just darken it. So it's minimized. It's not gone, right? Same thing with this bright area. So I'm going to save this and bring it back to Lightroom and let's compare to the original. Okay. So the original right? Let's do a smart, a virtual copy. I'm going to get my terms correct here. I keep losing my terms. I don't know why it's showing me that flower, but that's interesting. Oh, it copied that one too. Okay. So there's the copy. I got the spinny wheel again. Okay. There's our Photoshop version. There's the copy. I'm just going to reset this one. Okay, so let's let's compare. So we've got the original. Come on, mouse. Original. Let's put them in order. Okay. 
right? Original as photographed. Lightroom edit, which is already pretty good, right? And then final edit with uh, Luminar and Photoshop. So now the flowers really stand out. Hey, Deb, I haven't got to your images yet. We've got lots of flowers. Okay, so the whole point and everything I've done to this image was to minimize the background, minimize all the parts that were distracting, and we didn't actually erase the stick, we just blurred it. Okay, so give that a try and see how you go. Let's try something different. Okay. Let me just undo that. Now I've got um, I've got an image of Karen's that's really pretty. And I want to see what we can do to bring this one out. Okay. So we've got lots of pretty uh, daisies. And there is sort of a little bug on this one here. And she's used um, a nice shallow depth of field. It's F8, which is interesting. Ah, really long lens. That's why. So she's using a 500 millimeter lens. That's why she's getting a shallow depth of field at 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 f8, right? Okay? Because when you use a long lens, she's far away from the subject, right? Okay? Your depth of field changes, right? And she's she's getting a very minimal depth of field here. Okay, so uh, that's a really pretty one. Um, we've got one of Sue's as well. She sent in two different ones, so looks like some cherry blossoms and this is the stronger of the two. Okay. So can you see why this is the one I would edit? Okay. Oh, an almond tree. Interesting. Okay. Versus this one. So this one is great for the orchard, but it doesn't, it's not really artistic. So if you're going sort of for an artistic look of flowers, right, you definitely want to aim more for something like this. Okay. Keep in mind as well, like your camera settings here, we're at F10 at a thousandth of a second. Okay. And if you want to start getting that background blurry, think about opening the lens up more. Okay. So it's a wide lens, which isn't going to give you a lot because you're close to the subject. You're going to get lots of stuff in focus. So try considering, think about maybe F5.6 or even F4. So you start to get these flowers in the front sharp and these ones more blurry in the background. Again, we could use that lens blur or we could take it to Luminar as well. You know, Sue doesn't use either of those things. And uh, let's see what she said about her image. Um, Photoshop. Okay, so how to improve the background was her question. Okay, so that's exactly. So we're going to start with, with Lightroom because if you're working, I'm going to do yours as well, Karen. So I'm going to do these two. Um, if you're working with Lightroom, okay, or if you're working with Photoshop, you have Adobe. So whether or not you have um, Adobe Camera Raw and you open the image in Photoshop or you open it in Lightroom and work with the tools here, it's the same tools, okay? So Adobe Raw filter is the same as using the Lightroom tools, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing I did and I'm gonna go a little bit quicker here. Ah, it's a JPEG. Okay, so unfortunately we don't have camera profiles. So I could pick a different profile here if I want to choose one. Oh, that's really neat actually with the purple. But if we were trying to minimize the background, I wanna get one that's making the flowers stand out. Okay, definitely going more purple, but I like that color tone. So I like number seven. I'm going to go with modern number seven. And then I'm going to dial the purple out a little bit. And well, the blue and uh, the yellow out. Okay. So we're making the sky. There's before and after. Just gives it a little bit more punch. Let's do the double click. Okay. Now it sent white to the minus side. So let's see what it's doing here. What's clipping? There's tiny little highlights on the flowers. So I'm not super worried about that. I can bring those down a little bit here because the exposure is good, okay? The exposure is bang on, right? So I'm going to give this a little bit of clarity overall. Very tiny, okay? Very, very tiny. I'm going to add a medium edge vignette, and that's, again, a preset that I'm using, okay? And checking the clipping again waiting for my Lightroom to catch up. Okay, so nothing is clipping, that's good. 
Okay, clipping warnings. Again, see those little tiny highlights? If I zoom in, oops, if I zoom in and do the clipping warnings, okay, you can see that there is clipping on the tips of the flowers. So I can bring this down a little more if I want. Or we could bring the exposure down, a combination of both. Okay, darken it a little bit. That looks too dark to my mind. Okay, so just want those highlights in line. Okay. But notice how bringing this black down, right? Remember, black intensifies our colors. So look at that. Okay. See the difference? Pastel, intense. So you get to decide too do you want the intense color or do you want more pastel? Right? If you want more pastel, lift the blacks. Right? We might even go to a matte look. I'm going to adjust this vignette as well because I feel like it's darkening this corner too much. So I'm going to scale it back just a little bit, maybe make it more circular. Let's try that. Okay. I'm also going to make sure that lens corrections are on. And I don't know if it's going to do anything here. I can't find that. But what I want, what I'm looking for is this lens vignette. Okay. So I'm going to turn this one off temporarily. Under lens correction, you have this vignette amount, right? So when you choose a camera profile, if it knows what lens it used, okay? So this one, it says, says it was 39 millimeter focal length, but I don't know what lens was used here. Let's see if it will tell me in the metadata. So I'm going back to the library, Canon. Doesn't tell me the exact lens just says focal length 39 mil, which is an odd focal length. So I don't know what lens was used. Sue, do you, can you tell me what lens you used here? Um, I can choose Canon and see if it picks it. 10 to 22 maybe. And can you see what that did? It lightened that corner a little bit, okay? So I just chose Canon and then it picked what lens it thought it was, okay? So it's doing a little bit of vignette adjustment. See how that corner is dark? I'm just brightening that corner a bit because it's darkening it too much. And that is a lens calibration issue. So now I can bring this vignette back down and just keep it soft. Okay. Or a better way to do this would be a radio filter, actually. So let's do a radial mask. So a radial mask. And I want to keep this corner, I want to darken this part. So I'm going to do a radial circle and put it more like this. Let's just drag it. I want to keep this corner from being darkened. Okay, so now I can bring this exposure down. Oh, need to invert. So I'm on the outside. Okay, let's bring the exposure down a little bit in the highlights. See, I'm just darkening these edges now. Okay, like so. So if you want an off center vignette in Lightroom, you need to use the radial mask. So before and after, okay. What do you guys think about cropping? Would you crop this one, do you think? Does anything bother you about the cropping? I think it's pretty good, but the one thing that bothers me is this kind of hole in this bottom corner here. Okay, let me get myself off the screen here. Can you see the hole? Okay, if I go full frame for a moment, See, what I'm looking at is this part here. So I kind of want flowers in the corner, but there's sky there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it a little bit so that I, I have flowers in this corner. Let's come in from the top a little bit as well. So there's a lot of sky up here that maybe we don't need either. So I'm watching this corner. I'm watching this corner. And I'm washing the sky. And now I got a hole in this corner. So maybe we can tilt. I want to keep the edge of this 
this branch for sure. Uh, tilting wasn't working, so let's try tilting the other way. Keeping the branch. I'm watching this corner. I'm watching this corner. Now let's try that again. Going off aspect ratio. There we go. Now we have this little flower right in the corner. I like that. Okay, so watch your edges. I don't like the stick over here, but we can just clone that one out. See how much better that is with that corner filled in? Okay, just a simple little crop. And then I'll use the content aware healing tool here just to get rid of that one. Things on the edge. And maybe even this one. And maybe even this dark one because it kind of bugs me. So everything else is nice and soft pink. That one bugs me. There we go. Okay, clean edges. Okay, so always check your edges, right? And now I don't even know if I would blur the background on this one, to be honest, because I think it's quite nice the way it is. But Sue's using Photoshop. So I'm going to take this one to Photoshop, okay? And let's see what we can do there. So I'm going to go edit in Photoshop. Because there's, there's blur filters in Photoshop as well. Is it going? There we go. Okay, so here we are, we've got our layer. So let's just take a look at some of the filters, okay? We actually have what's called a blur gallery. So if you open this blur gallery, okay? Um, it's gonna give me some stuff on the other thing. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we have some options here. We have field blur, iris blur, tilt shift, path, and spin, okay? So spin is like the twist in Luminar. So this one just is general blur right? So like a Gaussian blur. This is like a lens blur, okay? Similar, okay? Iris blur gives you a, a spot so you can adjust sort of around it. I find it a little bizarre, right? I think, yeah, I can position it, okay? So I can position it where I want it, okay? Not my favorite. Tilt shift is similar to what we had in Luminar, okay, again, it's giving us um, edge blurs, okay, so not what I want here. And path blur kind of gives you more of a motion effect, okay, and spin blur gives us a spin. So uh, we want opposite. <laughs> so obviously I want that inverted, right, so it's giving me a spin in the middle, not on the outside. So of the ones that I want to use. I think just the regular field blur is going to be our best choice. Okay. Because I'm looking at the background. What do I want to do to the background? So let's just give it a little bit of a blur. Okay. And of course, this is on a layer on a smart object. Okay. So it's going to give us a mask automatically. So when you open your object, when you open your image from Lightroom into Photoshop as a smart object, you get this smart filters okay meaning it's got a filter applied to this layer but automatically gives you a mask and we can get back to this at any time to the settings just by double clicking it okay so now we want to mask this right first i'm going to invert the mask so it's command i so it's not on any part of the image so black means it's not visible okay then i'm going to get a brush in white Maybe get the opacity to about 40%. I'm just clicking four on my keyboard. Make sure my brush is soft and large. And then I'm just going to start painting the softness in where I want it. Okay. So we want this kind of softness in the background. And you really need to do this kind of painting closer up like this okay so zoomed in because i don't want to get the sticks right i just want the stuff that's in the background okay so you really have to get specific in between here so you don't want to get the foreground flowers you just want these background ones so we're literally 
painting it in where we want it. Okay, so this stick in the middle here could get blurred. Right, we can also blur the edges if we want. But mostly I just want to blur the ones in the background, right? Now, if we're blurring the background, the cloud and the sky should be blurred as well. So if there's anything else visible in the sky, we should blur it. Any noise that's showing up here will get actually blurred as well. So that's a good thing. Okay. So let's just see what it's doing. To turn it off, just hide the eyeball, just click the eyeball. See what it's doing? It's blurring this. Now let's say I want more blur, okay? I can just double click here and it brings back the blur gallery. Let's just increase the slider. We say, okay. And now it's still using the same mask, but it's blurred it more. See that? So that's the advantage of using that smart filter, okay? Smart object. So that looks pretty good. I think it's a little too much blur now. It's kind of gone too soft. Okay. I do like the, the iris blur as well, okay? Um, see how it's blurring around there? We could actually work with that because we've masked it. Let's just try this iris blur instead, okay? So I'm gonna try the iris blur instead of the field blur, okay? Because we've masked it, we can change the kind of blur, right? Still the mask is the same, but now we can see what it looks like with the other kind of blur. Right? I think that looks pretty good. Another thing that I do sometimes in Luminar is um, I will apply a LUT and you can do that in Photoshop as well. The disadvantage is that you have to find it, okay? You have to go find it. So it's under adjustment layers and it's called color lookup. So we can add a color lookup and it adds it as a layer, okay? There it is. And then when you double click it, uh, where are we? You end up in the properties and it shows you, okay, we can load a lot. However, you have to know where they live on your hard drive to find them, okay? So it's a little bit trickier. You have to go uh, look for it, okay? I've got a few that I've used previously. So let's just see, they show up here. Um, it doesn't give us a preview either. Let's try crisp winter. Okay, obviously that's a little bit too strong, but we can dial it down if we can adjust it. Okay, let's try blues. Nope. Uh, futuristic. Well, that's kind of interesting. So that one is kind of interesting, right? It gives us a very different look. Now, because this is on a layer in Photoshop, we can just change the opacity of this layer and apply it gently. Okay, so it gives this faded out sort of soft antique look, which is kind of neat. Okay. Let's see what else. Kodak Fuji. Oh, moonlight. Moonlight sounds like it might work on here. No, <laughs> that's definitely a nighttime thing. Um, teal and orange. Okay, teal and orange is kind of neat. Those are those are fairly common lots. Okay, this one is neat as well. Uh, it's giving us a matte type of look. Again, you have full control over how this applies based on it's being a layer and you can just adjust the opacity of the layer. Okay. So you get to decide. Candlelight. Candlelight's kind of neat. Okay, more purple. And if you decide you don't want it, you could either remove this layer or simply turn the eyeball off and you have the option, okay? So I'm going to save this. Now, if you want to do like a mystical kind of thing like I did um, in Luminar, okay? The mystical uh, filter or the mystical tool, to do that in Lightroom, it's a little bit, we could actually work on that. You can do like what's called like an Orton effect, okay? Let me get rid of this 
that one go. There we go. Okay, you can do what's called an Orton effect. So I'm going to do what's called a stamp layer. Okay, so Command Option Shift E. Oops, I can't do a command. I can't do that. I have to copy it. Can't do a, a stamp layer of one layer. Okay, so I'm going to copy this layer. So it's duplicated. And then I'm just going to do what's called a rasterization of this layer. Where is it? Rasterize layer. So that applies the filters. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is turn it into a smart object again. So I've applied the other filter. Now it's a new one with this filter applied. Okay. And I'm going to go back here and do a Gaussian blur. Okay. Gaussian blur is just a general kind of blur. And I'm going to take it quite high because I want to show you how this works. Okay. So I'm going to go radius five. And obviously it's blurry. But when you change the blend mode to darken, look what happens. We get this really cool effect. Okay. So we can adjust this by changing the Gaussian blur amount because it's a smart filter or by dialing the opacity down. Okay, so this is effectively creating what's called the Orton effect, like what you're getting in Luminar. Okay, so if you don't have Luminar, okay, Sue, so if you're using Photoshop, apply your blur as a smart layer, smart filter, and then just change the blend mode. Okay, you could try different blend modes as well. Okay, I'm going to turn this opacity up. Darken is usually the one that you use for Orton, okay, but you could play with the other ones too. Okay. Lighten gives you this sort of ethereal look. Okay? Look at screen. That's kind of neat, actually. It gives it a much softer look. Okay? Like so. Okay, so you can really dial in the look of your image with some filters. Okay? I'm going to save this and bring it back to Lightroom. Where is my Lightroom? There we go. Okay, so there's the finished image. And there's the one we we brought from Lightroom. Okay, so we already did um, the basic edits in Lightroom. So that would be like your camera raw in Photoshop. And then we just did a little blur. Okay, see that? Like so. That was a fun one. Okay, let's do Karen's sunflowers. I want to do one fully in Luminar as well for somebody who is doing Luminar. Let's just see who else we got here. Where did Karen's sunflowers go? There they are. Okay, so this one here. Would you prefer me to do this one in Lightroom or Luminar, Karen? I can do either. You're welcome, Sue. Um, yeah, the cropping makes a big difference, right? Um, just that that corner piece, but it's a really pretty, pretty photo. You've got some some good potential to to um, make a nice print of that one for your wall, is what I would suggest. Lightroom. Okay. All right. So let's work on this one, and this is a DNG. So we're gonna do the camera profile first, right? Landscape usually gives us nice colors for flowers, greenery, that kind of thing. So if the camera has a landscape profile, that's usually what I start with. Let's do shift double click. Okay, so once again, it's bringing the whites down. So I'm going to use my option key. So I'm holding the alt option key to see where it's clipping. I don't see any clipping here. Let's just bring the highlights down. It's taking the blacks all the way down here, but I think it's actually going too far. It's making a little too much contrast. So I'm going to keep this one a little softer. Okay. All right. Now you've already done some nice blur in the front and the back, right? By depth of field. So we don't have to worry about that. I really want to bring attention to this center flower. And I talked about it earlier um, as how to decide what I'm doing to the pictures is that I want to bring attention to the subject by having it be the sharpest thing 
it'd be the brightest thing, right? And your eye is going to be drawn there. So you want to look for stuff in the background, in the edges of the picture that's that's sharp or bright and taking attention away from the subject. Well, here, the whole image is equally bright, okay? So I definitely want to focus more on that center flower. So we could try a regular vignette, and I think I'm probably going to do a combination of both. Okay? First, I'm going to turn on the camera profiles, and it tells me the 500 mil lens that was used. Okay, so it recognized the Nikkor lens that was used, okay? and it's not doing a lot, just does a little bit of um, distortion correction. Okay, and on the vignette, Okay, so I'm going to bring this down because I want to get really close on this flower. So I'm going to make it almost round and then bring it in real tight. Because that flower is in the middle, I can do that. Okay, bring my feather back up. So look at immediately what's happening. Right, we're already bringing our attention into that flower just by darkening those edges. So now the edges are blurry and darker. Do we want to crop this one? What do you guys think? So there's lots of symmetry, right? So symmetry and sometimes putting your subject in the center works. Let's see what happens if we put it. Oh, she's already cropped it. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so it obviously came with some of your adjustments. Okay, so whatever you did and you sent me the DNG, it came with some adjustments already done. Okay, so I'm going to reset this crop. Actually, I'm curious now. I'm going to do a, a virtual copy and do a full reset because I want to see the original. Aha. Interesting. Okay. So that was the original. And Karen sent me one already cropped and slightly adjusted. Okay. So I'm going to continue with this one and I'm going to start the crop over again. I like what you've done by focusing in on that one flower, but I think I want it a little bit more off centered. And I like the fact that this stem kind of goes over there. So I'm going to keep the aspect ratio. So I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and I like this blurry background. Okay. So I'm going to come in. I want to get rid of this one on the left, on the right. I agree with that, but I want to keep this one and this one a little more off centered. So I'm going to come in more. Let's try more like, huh? That's interesting. So if we put this guy, see on the power thirds, so where you have their thirds um, indicated, right? Where they cross. If you put your subjects in the thirds, you'll get what's called the PowerPoint. These are the PowerPoints, right? So just by moving this down, Let's see what that does. So I'm cropping not quite as tight as what Karen did, but look at that. Okay, now when I do the post crop vignette, so because Lightroom is a true post crop vignette, okay, it goes from the cropped edge. So the vignette moved when I moved the crop. So let's just make it a little more oval. That looks good. And let's go with, yeah, color priority or highlight priority. So these guys here. So which one you choose, which type of vignette? I almost never use the paint overlay because it just looks like mush, to be honest. Um, color overlay looks good sometimes. And I just have, you just have to try them, right? In this case, I think the highlight priority keeps the edge looking more natural. This slider at the bottom Okay, if I bring it to zero, it's darkening the highlights on the edges. If I bring it up, you see the highlights coming back. So I want to keep them dark. Okay. Let's go all the way. That looks pretty good to me. So see how that's doing a massive job. Okay. I might actually do a radio filter as well. So let's do a radio mask on this same area okay so i'm getting these same flowers and then i'm going to invert it so it's on the outside okay invert and now what do i want to do on the outside i'm going to further blur it so i'm going to bring the texture down clarity down a little bit 
And I'm also going to bring the highlights down. Okay, so contrast. Remember, contrast grabs attention. So what are those things that grab your attention, right? Sharpness, contrast, brightness, and bright color, right? So I'm bringing the brightness down. We could even bring the saturation down a tiny bit on the edge. Look at that. See that? I mean, that's obvious, right? Don't keep it, don't make it obvious, but just a tiny bit, like subtle. Let's darken it even more. And I want to keep this edge, I want to keep it feathered high. So I'm going to feather it more. So the feather is the zone of fading, right? The zone where it fades to and from. Like that. So it keeps it really subtle. Let's see what that's doing. It's furthering that vignette. <coughs> so honestly, that's about all you need to do here. Look at that. Okay. So bright. All you need to do is a little bit of tone control. That's it. Now, the other thing I could do is to bring the flowers out even more. Right, so this is the edge, right? We've already got this placed. Let's do duplicate and invert. So now it's gonna be on the inside where the flowers are. I'm gonna do a little bit smaller, make it a little bit smaller. And on the inside, I'm going to give it texture and clarity. Okay. Let's see what that's doing on the inside. I'm getting that flower a little bit too much. So let's move it down a little bit. Let me zoom in. Can you see what it's doing on the inside? So it's it's sharpening these two guys. See that? We could go even more if you want to see it really dramatic. There we go. So again, your eye is being drawn to sharpness and contrast. And we're using these vignettes. to affect that, okay? So here's before the masking and after. So we're darkening and blurring the edge and sharpening and adding contrast to the middle. That's why I often use a custom vignette in Lightroom, okay? That's okay, Karen. She says, I must remember to reset. Um, I should have checked that. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It, because it came with a DNG with, with the data attached, um, I could see your edits. So that's fine. That's actually kind of a neat thing to, to check. Yeah, it is, it is, it's a really cool image, right? Like with all these rows and rows and rows of flowers and the fact that there's, you know, something to break up the pattern, right? So some, if you have something that's patterned like this, you need something to break it up and, and what, what you've done is perfect. So you've broken it up with the focus and also the fact that there's a bug on that one and there's that green um, stem, right? So focusing in on, on something that's different when you see a pattern like that, right? A great image. That was a fun one. You could even put a texture on that one. Like you could take that one into Luminar and put a texture overlay, I think would be really fun. Especially texture the edge might be neat, right? Okay, who else is here that I haven't done their image yet? Let's see what else we've got. Um, is Linda here? Have we seen Linda today? I haven't seen Linda today. She sent a lot of pictures. I've got this one of Deb's. And I've got an old one of Stephanie's. I'm just going to do this one really quick because um, this one came in and it's really dark. So I just want to talk about exposure. We've talked about exposure a lot in the past, right? And I'm not sure why she's, okay, so she's on manual mode here. So manual mode, you really have to be careful when you're shooting in manual because you can end up with an exposure that looks like this, right? So you really have to check your histogram when you're taking your pictures. But let's just do the quick fix in here. Sorry, I'm really sniffly. It's going to fix my nose. Give me a second here.
<laughs> Rob, talk for a moment. I got to remove myself. Come on screen or just come on, on mic. Tell them about something. All right. I'm filling time. What was that happened that she said I should tell a story about earlier? Um, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Caught me off guard, darling. Uh, oh, Mickey. Here. Right, Mickey. Oh, yeah, Mickey. There you go. Yeah, so I was hiking. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, I used to have a thing where I would um, I would manifest seeing a Mickey Mouse wherever I was in whatever weird situations in my travels. And one time was uh, I was hiking up to Mount Everest Base Camp in the Himalayas and um, looked. We were at it, one of the one of the little places about four thousand meters somewhere about there. And I looked through a window, and there was Mickey Mouse <laughs> on a coffee cup on the table of the family that was cooking the meal for us. Yeah. Okay. And I've blown my nose now. So I'm just doing a quick update on this one. Okay. So here's Deb Stephanie's image uh, with the updates. Can you change the layout, please, Rob? Okay. So I just did a quick camera profile change and a shift double click. And you can see this image is quite underexposed. Like it's it's about a stop and a half, maybe two stops underexposed, right? So uh, what was the original exposure on this guy in terms of ISO? When you underexpose, it's not telling me the exposure. There it is. Um, ISO 800. So it's not super high, but when you underexpose and then push the exposure up, you're going to get grain and that's what's happening here. Okay. So when I zoom in, can you see the amount of noise that's happening here? Even at ISO 800, it's because of the exposure. So be really careful with your exposure. This is actually a really cool image. I think there's some potential here. Um, and on this one, instead of maybe, you know, trying to fight the noise, put a texture on it or do some, do some grain, you know, I, I like what's happening here. So I would I would work with this one, Stephanie. It's it's really well composed. Would I crop it? Um, maybe a little. This thing down here bugs me and some of these, you know, sticks sticking out. So I might crop it a little bit. Let's just see about getting in closer here. How about like that? Again, I'm watching the edges, right? So I want something dark on the edge and stuff not sticking out so i'm gonna go more like that and then i'll just use the erase tool to get rid of the things that are bugging me that's that content aware so really quickly i don't know why that was applying some sort of weird lens profile um, i would probably get rid of this thing as well because it's bugging me Let's see how it does. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Now, if I want to put another spot here, I can't put a spot there. So you have to trick it. You have to put a spot somewhere else and then just move it. There's my little trick for the day. Okay. So I kind of like it. It feels like it's almost taken at nighttime. I would, I would be curious to know if it was taken at nighttime. Okay. All right, let's do Linda's then, since Linda's here. Okay, so Linda sent in a bunch of flower images. She went crazy with the flowers. So I'm going to let you guys vote. Or Linda, do you have a preference um, over which one you would like me to edit? Because there's six here, and they're all very different, right? So there's some that are close-ups. There's some that show more flowers, right? Cat's making a noise. Rob, did she get a mouse? I hear a cat making noises. Uh, we have mice in our house. We've been catching mice. That's the other thing. So Mickey Mouse. <laughs> we got Mickey Mouse in our house. Which one would you guys like me to work on? Okay, Karen says the white daisies. Linda says the rose. So then we got tiger lilies. We got, um, is that geraniums? What's the one in the upper right? I think it's a geranium. No, is it? 
And then we've got little mums and marigolds. Hey, I named all the flowers. <laughs> so which are the strongest images you think, right? I think of these, the top row are stronger than the bottom row for the reasons we talked about with Karen's, right? Because your focus is is more on one or or small part of the flowers. And I would hazard a guess that it has to do with the lens used as well, right? If I take a look at each of these, right? So this one is a 55 mil lens, 55. 400 okay look at the difference here we've got the background this is a really pretty image okay so this one i really like a lot tiger lilies okay 18 so even though she's done this one with a wider lens you've gotten a lot closer right so these ones are the more of the feature and the other ones are supporting okay this is a longer lens but there's nothing featured right so there's nothing that stands out here, I think this one is one of the, this is one is less favorite as well as this one. Okay, so there's nothing that stands out as the subject on these ones. And the lighting is very harsh here, which means that the contrast overall is increased, just like the yellow flowers that we just did. Okay, same here. This is better lighting on flowers. It's much softer, also softer, harder light, but it works here with the daisies. And softer okay so can you see the difference so hard light soft light okay all right let's see what we got we've got daisies 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 rose rose lilies rose lilies rose hmm nobody's voting for the one and the pink one i like the pink one but okay so let's do the rose then okay so let's do the rose and what we're going to do is apply some copy and paste. Okay, so we're going to, are you okay if I do this one in the Lightroom? Or would you like me to do that in something else for you, Linda? Um, let me check what you said on your form here. What did Linda say? Looks like you're using Lightroom and Luminar. So let's use Lightroom because I want to do a copy and paste of these settings. Okay. So again, immediately, what am I going to do? What do you think I'm going to do here? Anybody have any guess? What should we do to this one? Why don't you guys guide me here? What did we do to the other ones that I want to do to this one? What's the first thing? First thing. Okay, Linda, Isla says crop, Nancy says camera profile, both of those things. So let's go camera profile. And I'm not crazy about the landscape one. It does a weird thing with the color. I kind of like, ooh, I kind of like faithful. It kind of gives it like a soft, like a soft orange. That one makes the color more, um, the rose petal more defined. But I kind of like this camera faithful one, right? Remember, we can also look at some of these others, right? We can look at a vintage one and go into like a faded rose, which is kind of neat. I really, I actually really like that, okay? So we could go into vintage or we could look at the artistic ones, just skimming them. You know, I'm not seeing anything that grabs me. But I do like this idea of the faded out. But I want to do that my way. So I'm going to start with faithful, right? And then I am going to do a crop, right? Karen says, camera profile, blur the background, sharpen the flower. So those are all the things we did before. Exactly. So let's do a crop because this guy up here is doing what? Drawing attention. If we look at it upside down, which we've talked about before, okay? When we look at the image upside down, let me get me off the screen here. When we look at it upside down, right, your eye will go to the brightest areas, the areas of sharpness, and the areas of the most contrast. Where's your eye going to? So it's competing between those two roses right now, right? So let's put it right back, right side up. And so it's competing with this one up here. So. 
I'm going to keep the aspect ratio, which is come in until we can get rid of that one. Now the rose is right smack in the middle. Do we want it in the middle or do we want it off center? If we want it off center, I have to either crop some more, go off aspect ratio, or deal with this another way. Okay. I kind of like, there's nothing over here in the background. This black actually draws my attention. This background works better because it's the leaves, right? So I might be inclined to go this way and clone this out instead. So let's go that way. Let's do the whites and the blacks, right? So just that shift double click, look what that did, okay? Immediately we have some contrast, okay? Immediately. There's some noise happening in here, and I don't know if that is from ISO, 3200 ISO. Do you remember why you, you did 3200 ISO, Linda? Um, you want to try and keep your ISO low. It's at F16. So if you had opened this aperture a whole bunch, like even to F8, your ISO could have been much lower, like 800, okay? F56, your ISO would be 400 because they're, they're like a teeter-totter. <coughs> <laughs> opening the aperture, lower the ISO, okay? Because you don't need you don't need F16 to keep the front of the flower focus, and it would have helped throw that background out of focus as well, okay? So I would have opened the lens to probably F56 and a lower ISO here, okay? But that's okay. We can work with that, okay? Now we want to do what we said before, which is um, get rid of that rose in the background. Okay, so I'm going to try. I'm going to attempt using this tool and let's see how it does. Okay, so I just want to make sure I got that whole thing selected. This is the content aware. Okay, it's it's weird. Okay, but we can refresh it and see what else it gives us. Still getting this orange thing in the corner. Let's try it one more time. If it doesn't give me what I want, I can select what area, okay? So it says command drag on the photo to collect, to select a custom source. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do command, which gives me this crosshairs. And I'm just gonna draw a square here. So it's going to draw from that square and try and fill this area. Did it do anything? Still getting orange, okay? So I might have to do a secondary one. Still getting orange. It doesn't want to fill the whole thing in. That's probably the best we've seen. Now I want to do a second one, but remember the trick, right? So I'm just going to draw here and then move it, okay? So you can do a second one, but you got to trick it like this. Let's see if that works. We're getting close. I can switch it. And see if I can do a better job. That's done a better job there. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, so then I'm just going to get rid of this one too while we're here. There we go. That's not bad. We're getting close. Okay, now I'm going to add a little edge vignette. I'm just using the edge vignette tool, uh, my preset. And I feel like the whole image is maybe a little bit orange, maybe too yellow, or do we want it more orange? Okay, so let's play with the color. So if we cool it down, the orange stands out more and the background recedes. Can you see that? The more orange we have, the background stands out more because warm colors project. So what if we want both? What if I want the orange of the flower increased with the background bluer? Well, we have to do a mask then, right? So we need to do a mask anyways. So let's do subject and see if it finds the rose. Crossing my fingers. Crossing my fingers. Did it? Can't tell with a red mask. Let's use the green mask. Yes. Okay. So it's gotten everything except this little bit at the bottom, but that's okay. I don't necessarily need that little bit at the bottom. Now what we want to do to it I just said I want to increase the color and warm up the rose. So let's make it more orange, but not too much. I definitely want more clarity. Okay. See the difference? 
increase. Definitely want more texture. Okay. How about that? Okay, see how that's punching the rose out? Then I'm going to call it flower. Okay, I'm not calling it rose because remember, I'm going to copy and paste this onto the other images and they don't have roses. Okay, then I'm going to duplicate and invert. Now it's got me the background and I'm going to do the opposite. We're going to cool off the background. See how that disappears? Look at that. Warm background cool background. See how it recedes? Makes the orange really stand out. Okay. Like so. And then we want to lower the texture, lower the clarity. And we could blur it some more using sharpness, or I could bring the exposure down even more. I'll take the highlights down a little bit. If I increase the blacks, okay, now we get really contrasty. Let's do exposure instead. It still feels brown to me, so I'm going to lower it even more. About like that. About like that. This one is a perfect kind of image for a texture. I'm going to lower the noise or do some noise reduction on the background. So I'm really blurring this this background. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. Can you see the noise here on the flower? And that's because of that high ISO, right? So we can work with that and, and remove the noise there as well. But see how I'm removing the noise on the background, blurring it. Okay, so I've increased that noise reduction. Definitely now the flower needs some noise reduction as well. So let's do that. Do a little bit of noise reduction on the flower. The texture overlay would do a great job. We could also run this one through um, the Lightroom Denoise AI, right, which is where? Let me close the mask. Right. So far, we've gone from that to that. Okay, so very dramatic, right? Under detail, if we want to deal with that noise reduction, this only works on a raw file. Okay, so if you have a JPEG, it will not work. Okay, so we can do denoise to get rid of some of this noise. But honestly, I'm not going to worry about it because I think I'm going to apply a texture on this one. Okay, so we've got some really neat things happening here. Remember that sort of faded look that I liked on the rose? Okay, we could do that here. Or I could pull this over. <coughs> It's a luminar. To apply a texture, you really need to use either Photoshop or Luminar because you need to have a program that does layers. Okay. So I'm going to take this one over to Luminar. Deb has says the water droplets really punched with the clarity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's do the before and after again and take a look at the water droplets. Yeah, I didn't even notice them before. Good point, Deb. Yeah, good point. Okay. But before I go to Luminar, let's do a copy and paste. Okay. So let's just pick all of those images again. Um, let's pick these four. Now it's going to depend on what Lightroom thinks. I'm actually going to apply it to Marty's as well. Uh, let's do this on a few different things here. Let's just do a copy and paste on a whole bunch. Uh, those ones, let's try this one. That one should work. Uh, maybe this one as well. Okay, so now, and this one as well. Let's just go crazy here. So we can literally apply this to as many as we want, okay? So just buy a sync or a copy and paste. And of course, it's non-destructive editing, so uh, you can undo it at any point, okay? You want to make sure that the one that you are working on is the one that is going to be syncing from, okay? So make sure that that one is highlighted, okay? And you can do that a couple of different ways. I've taken it back into develop. Where did my, where does that go? Uh, I've gone back into develop, and then I can simply hit sync, okay? 
or you can do it from here as well. You just have to make sure that you've got the right image highlighted, okay? And you can right click. It's gonna take me a minute here. Develop settings and sync is here as well, okay? So you can do it from either place. I like to do it from the develop module, okay? So when you click sync, what's gonna happen is it's gonna ask us which things do we want it to apply, okay? So I'm going to check all first, okay? And then I'm going to uncheck cropping, okay? Because we did a very specific crop on this one. And I'm going to uncheck healing, okay? Because we removed that corner flower because that's something that I don't want it to apply to the other ones, okay? So everything else I want it to apply to. Oh, profile correction, okay? So we don't need the lens profile copied and pasted because it's probably a different um, camera and lens because they were taken by different people. Okay, so you can uncheck the things that you don't want to apply. Now, I didn't do transform, so I could leave it on or off and so on. I didn't do color grading, I didn't do color mixer, so it shouldn't really do anything to synchronize. So let's do synchronize and then just see what happens. Okay, right? now it's gonna take a minute to run through. The more masking and AI things that you have, because I use the masking AI to select the subject, okay? So keep in mind that the mask is gonna be different on every single one, because the, the program's gonna analyze what it thinks is the subject in, in each different image. So we can have a totally different mask in each one because of the AI, okay? Does that make sense? I've been trying a new uh, for my camera here and a, on my video camera, so I don't know how well it's working. Am I sharp today? Have I had any glitches? You tell me, Rob. See you, Holly. I didn't even see you today. Okay, so now I've done a sync. Let's take a look at all of the images that I just synced, okay? That's what we just did, right? Which ones does it work on? Let's just kind of scroll through them. So this one, now keep in mind that I brightened it a little bit because it was, I changed the color, right? So this one, probably the camera profile doesn't match. So we could take a look at that. That one was the one we started with. This one's too warm because I warmed up the flowers, remember? And it's too dark, but we can tweak it. But look at this one. This one actually looks really good. It's warmed it up, but look at the texture on the flower. Isn't that great? This one looks great as well. This one looks good. So see how it creates a starting point? This one's a little dark. That one looks good, Marguerite. Look at that. Look at how it darkened that background. This one's a little crunchy and orange. A little overdone, a little orange. Okay, so it worked on some and it worked, didn't work on others. That one's too much, okay? But what it allows you to do is to get close. For example, this is the other one that I liked of Linda's, okay? And it's a little dark, but that's easily fixed, right? Easily fixed. Let's just wait for it to open, because I darkened the background quite a lot on this one, okay? So I'm gonna bring this black up a little bit, because it's too much black. And let's check these masking. So the flower, that's the background. The flower warmed up. Okay, I'm gonna remove that. So I don't warm up the flower. Let's keep it pink. In the background, right? I like what's happening though. I like what's happening. We could probably even take the highlights down even further. And let's blur it even further. But overall, like at the flower, see that? It's really coming out. And I wonder if that's that camera profile too that I chose. Okay, so I chose camera faithful. If I choose a different camera profile, okay, see we get something completely different. So two changes gives us a completely different image. But starting point from that sync or that copy and paste got really close, right? The tiger lilies, I think, worked really well also, right? It's a little dark here, and I would probably do some cropping or something to minimize this white part of the background. What if we crop this one into a square? 
Look at that, right? Oh, I like the square. Now we solve both problems. Again, a little too much black, but we can just solve that. Okay, once again, really close, okay? So a couple of tweaks. So keep in mind that even though they're not the exact same image, or in this case, not even the same photographer, you can use the copy and paste or make a preset, you know, as a flower edit, right? And choose which things you want to copy forward, right? I could have chosen not to copy um, the masks, right? So look at this one. There's the before, this is Marty's, and after. So it did a good job of selecting this as the subject, right? Let's just brighten the whole thing a little bit. And I'm going to do shift double click on both of these. Let's check the mask. Okay, so here's the flower. Okay, so it did, it picked up a little bit of this one. Okay, so I could just say, okay, subtract object and have it find that one like that. And then this one, okay, it's missing that flower. Well, it's actually not bad. Actually, the mask on this one is better, right? But now I can see what it's doing, right? Do I want to darken it a little bit more? Actually, if I bring the blacks down, come on, with work with me. There we go. If I bring the blacks down instead of the highlights, I'll get more contrast in the background. And I don't like this one as blue. My sliders are not working. Come on, work with me. There we go. I don't want this one as blue. So that looks pretty good, right? Once again, it's done a good job. Right? So this flower, maybe I want this one even warmer. See how it's becoming more orange? The more warm I give it, the more yellow I give it. Let's give it a little more black to intensify its color. Right? Remember, black, not saturation. What about cropping? We've got kind of this row, almost like smiley face. I feel like they're smiley faces, like they're smiling at me. Let's come in a little bit tighter. So they become more like the background. And there we go. Okay, so once again, oh, look. There's a little guy flying there. I kind of like him there. You can delete him or erase him if you want. But again, a copy and paste of the settings got us super close, right? Didn't work so well on the tiger, on this uh, stargazer lily. See, stargazers I know because I did lots of weddings back in the day, so I know that's a stargazer. It did work well on these tiger lilies though, as well, okay? So also Marty's. A little dark on the background, but again, we can scale back the blacks and it should be a quick fix. Right, scale that back. And I think overall, this one is a little cool. So let's warm up the whole image. And then let's check the mask. Okay, did it do a good job masking? Yes, it did. Right. Okay, what's it doing on the background? It's doing a lot of contrast here. Okay, I'm going to take out some of the blue. And it's doing, how is it getting so much contrast? What's happening here? If anything, I wanna lighten this background. So I'm gonna bring the shadows up and the highlights down. And let's do the same on the overall image. I think the image is a little dark. See that? So let's brighten it. Once again, we're close, right? Let's go back to how it was shot. Something like that, okay? So warmed it up, bring out those flowers.
All right, let me come back to the original one we started working on. So that was a cool copy and paste, right? And I want to finish up with this one. Come on, Lightroom. The rows by adding a texture on this one, okay? So I really like where we're at on this one now, but let's take it to the next level because I feel like, um, isn't there a song, My Antique Rose or something like that? There's a song about a rose. Linda says, I love what you've done. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Oh, perfect. Okay, well, I'm not done yet, Linda. So let's just see where it goes next because I see this vision of like this something antique. Okay? Now, I'm not going to take this to Photoshop. I'm going to go directly to Luminar Neo because I know that I want to add a texture. Okay? And um, I might do sort of a LUT as well. And I like Luminar for applying the LUTs because as I mentioned in Photoshop, you don't get the preview. and in Luminar, you can install all your lots, your custom lots, and have them available to see. And Photoshop, you got to go find them on your computer. And I always forget where they are. So honestly, it's easier to apply it in here. I should put this in my favorites. Okay? I should put all of the ones in my favorites that are my favorites. Okay, there we go. All right. So the first thing I wanted to do is to apply the texture. However, do I want to apply the mood first and then the texture? Because we could also do a duplicate layer, right? By duplicating this image as another layer and applying the LUT on there, you can actually do some different stuff too. You can actually even do a blur as well, right? So we could blur the background. So there's some neat things you can do with duplicate layers here too. So let's just try a mood, okay? I'm going to set my amount a little bit higher. And I know that there's one in, where are we? I think it's in the creative section. Yeah, creative. There's a few in here that have this really nice sort of antique feel. Okay, wooden, Ushua. Ooh, tritone's kind of neat. Smoky. Okay, sepia. I knew sepia was going to have what I like, but smoky's kind of neat too. Okay. So I'm just kind of scrolling through them. Even Kodachrome adds some contrast and is kind of neat. And remember, we can apply it to just the rows or the whole image, right? So I'm looking at the rows. Which one does the rows look the best? Oh, I do like that. Let's try Smoky. So that one's adding a lot of contrast. Okay. <laughs> sepia ends up going full sepia if you go really high. Hmm. That's a very different look as well. Okay. That's a very different look as well. If we dial this down, right, look at how minimal the background becomes. Right. But do we like the rows? Right. Because I could easily just mask this in or paint it in to just the rows. Right, painting it in with one swash, okay, because it's easy because it's a circle. So see how that's doing a neat thing on the rows, and we can apply a different lot on the background. Was there one that I liked on the background? What if I do sepia? Let's just look at sepia on the background. It goes brown again. This one's kind of neat. It definitely minimizes the background, right? There was another one that minimized the background. Kodachrome. Kodachrome. Actually, that's doing some nice things on the rows as well. I'm going to apply it about like that. Maybe change my mind. <laughs> Let's try cinematic toning. See, this is the fun part of processing where now I'm literally just playing around, you know? I'm just like, well, which one works? I keep coming back to this tritone one. It's just the one that was, it's just the one that was faded. That's really blue. I want the background minimized.
Oh, there's a whole set of sepia tones. Ooh, look at the rose on that one. Ooh, I like the rose again. I like the rose again on this one. So now I'm doubling up on my on my masking. Once again, maybe I just want to paint it in to the rose. See how that's soft? Oh, I like that. So maybe I'm not going to do it a lot on the background. Maybe I'll do something different with it. Maybe I'm going to blur it. Okay, so let's try blur. We could do a twist blur. And let's put the center right in the middle of the rows. Okay. So changing the angle. Okay. Is it doing much on the background? I don't know if it's doing much on the background. 45 degrees tends to give us the most twirl, right? You'll get like this rotating twirl. Uh, we can also try motion. I'm looking at the background, okay? So we're having trouble figuring out what you want to um, do with the blur. Let's get it off the rose, okay? So let's mask it off here so we're not getting distracted. There we go. Got to get in these edges here. There we go. Might blur the edge of the rose a little bit, but we can fix that. Okay, so this is the twist blur. Before, after, or maybe just Gaussian. Maybe we just need to blur it a little bit. I think maybe just Gaussian. It also fixes some of that noise problem. Okay. So see the blur. Fixes this problem down here too. So maybe I want to erase it a little bit down here. And I've lost the edge of this flower here, this petal. That looks pretty good. Okay, now we can do a texture, okay? Because I want to solve this noise problem on the flower. But look what we've got, okay? Really kind of neat, soft, antique look. That's what I was thinking. That's what I had in mind with this. Um, somebody find the song. Isn't there an antique rose? I know my grandmother used to sing a song called My Wild Irish Rose. So I'm thinking like some kind of crumpled paper or wall, like a wall texture, concrete, or we could do bokeh. We could do a bokeh texture, might kind of, might be neat in the background. What if we do green bokeh? We could do two textures, okay? So we could do bokeh and then we could apply a texture overall. So I've chosen this one. Let's see what happens when it applies. Uh, Mark says, I can only go from Lightroom to Luminar. I can't Photoshop into Luminar. Have you tried? I've tried to fix it with Skylum. Have you ever seen that problem? Are you Mac or Windows, Mark? Um, I have not seen that problem. I have not had that problem myself. Um, so what happens when you go to Photoshop? It's just not there. It's possible you just need to install the plugin again. Okay, I don't know what's happening here. Here, I got too many things open, I think. I'm gonna close, I'm gonna close Photoshop. And I'm gonna close this version of Luminar. There we go. Okay, so now it's over, it's applied this bokeh overlay and I could change my blend mode here. My audio popped again. Okay, make note of the time, Rob, so we can check that. So it's just when I was applying this texture. Okay, so now, I can see, okay, what kind of blend mode. Look at what it's doing on the background. Okay, so remember we're gonna apply this to the background. Because so I can mask this off the rows again. Okay, so masking it off the rows. Like so. And then of course we can adjust the amount. So some bokeh in the background is kind of neat. 
we can move it around, switch the where the location is. I kind of liked it the way it was, like that. Okay, let's just keep it subtle. So now we've got some bokeh here. And I might erase it a little bit more from here. Okay. Now we can apply a texture. I might actually come back to this one because I'm not crazy about the amount of green. I don't want the green so intense. So I'm going to actually lower the saturation here. And I can do that in develop or can do that in color. So let's do that in color. Okay, so remember, this is only affecting the bokeh layer, okay, because I'm on the bokeh layer. So I'm just turning the green down a little bit. I could also try and shift the color. So if I want the green a different color, different hue, I just want to dial it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, now let's do a texture. I've got some images here that were used to make a pano. I don't need those in there. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's going to be a good texture. I could try this one with the crumbling wall. Let's try that. Or this one. Let's try this one. I like this one a lot. Um, these are in my in my ultimate um, and ultimate editing bundle. And once again, we need to Rob, if you could, I would share any links to stuff today. Um, it's not a loose cable rub there. There's no loose cables here. Everything's tight. Uh, if you could please share a link to our ultimate editing bundle. Okay. So usually with a texture overlay or soft light tends to work well. Okay, so look at overlay on the background. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. So I'm looking at how does it apply in the background? Right. And I like what it's doing there. Okay. So I'm going to dial it down. Actually, let's dial it up and see how it looks. So now we literally are just getting some color, but it's also applying on the rows, okay? And it's fixing that sort of noise problem because now it's just texture, okay? And if we want it not on the rows petals, we can erase the parts we don't want it on. So I'm just going to erase it from this middle part. Because I want it applying down here. Okay. So there's a before. This is what came from Lightroom. And that's where we're at now. Okay. So it's very different. I like it. If we don't like the bokeh or we don't need it, we can just see what it looks like without. Maybe we don't need it. Okay. I feel like this part needs to be darkened a bit more though. Okay. And I feel like the background is the green is too green. So I do feel like the, we need some sort of a lot or something on the background to tone it down a little bit more. So I can go back to the bottom layer, which is the flower. Okay. And I can apply either a color. Um, we can apply a color shift or we can apply a lot. Let's just do develop. That's quicker and easier. Okay, so develop allows me to shift it bluer again, just like we did on some of the other ones. Okay, remember I haven't masked it yet, so it's applying to everything. Let's bring the highlights down. Okay, like so, and then of course mask it off the flower. Okay, so I don't want it on the flower. Just want it on the background. That's just toning it down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Now there's a texture here. If I don't like that texture, okay, again, we can mask it or we can try flipping it. Now I'm getting a texture on the rows. I don't mind that, actually. Yeah. Oh, now I'm getting some weird spot down here. I definitely don't like that texture there. So this one, what I might do is just do a quick erase right there. 
That spot bugs me. That's it. Back to Lightroom. Okay, so Mark says, Mac, in Photoshop under filter, it does not show Luminar like I see you using in the programs. So when you, it, it, it won't show Luminar, it will show Skylum and then Luminar. So look for Skylum and then Luminar. I can take another one to Photoshop if you want to have a look, but send me a screenshot, Mark. I'm going to show you what to send me a screenshot of, right? Linda likes it. Awesome. Okay, well, you've got something to work on now, Linda. <laughs> okay. I really like it too. Um, textures work really well on images like this, like flowers, because they're kind of artistic, right? And everybody has a million flower photos. So what can you do with it that's different, right? This one, we've made it a little softer and, and pastel, as opposed to, you know, the intense orange that was in the, in the original. I, li I like the soft orange as well. So that's what we brought from Lightroom, right? I'm going to copy the crop here and I just want to show you what we did originally. So I'm going to do a smart um, virtual copy. I keep wanting to call it a smart copy. Okay, so that was the original before or after cropping, after we cropped it. That's the Lightroom edit, and that's the final edit. Okay, so yeah, very different. It's a little blue now that I look at it, so we can actually work more back. Maybe just on the rose. I'm going to warm the rose up. It's gone a little bit blue for my liking. There we go. A little more orange now. Okay, so how to get to Photoshop. Okay, let's do, can I take to Photoshop? What can I take to Photoshop? Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'll, I'll just pick one of Deb's here. I'm gonna do a quick one, just edit this one so I can have the exposure correct. And then I'll take it to Photoshop. Okay, shift, double click. All right, do a quick crop. Remember corners, pay attention to corners. Getting that white guy out of the corner up there. The one at the bottom bothers me a little bit as well because if we have not white at the bottom, this flower is gonna stand out a lot more, see that? Even these, these ones on the side here, these little petals that are left, draw your attention. That's better, right? So now uh, let's just do subject and background. I have a preset that I made myself um, for select subject and background. Okay? So subject, I picked up that white as well. So I wanna give it some texture and clarity. And I'm going to subtract this object over here. I don't want it. I don't want it selecting this, right? There we go. And then background, same problem. I'm going to add the object here. Yeah, it's it's not perfect, All right? But it's good enough. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take this one to Photoshop. So yeah, I'm bringing out the texture and the daisy again with the water droplets, okay? So there's before and after, okay? Like so, so right click and you're doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing here, right? You're going, Open in Smart Object, is that what you're doing, Mark? So follow along with me. So once we get to Photoshop, okay, I want to see, I want you to email me or send me um, your screenshot of what you see in Photoshop and we'll try and troubleshoot it, okay? Isla says she was stuck. Well, I'm glad you're unstuck, Isla. <laughs> and we're gonna be, this is be our last thing we do today. 
So I'm just waiting for Photoshop to open so we can show Mark what to send me a screenshot. Okay, so once it's opened, I want to make sure you're going to the same place that I'm going to. You're saying that it's not showing Luminar, right? But it's not showing Luminar as a filter. You have to go under here, okay? So you need to go filter, right? So same place. Make sure you go to filter. You won't see Luminar. It's under Skylum. And then all the versions of Luminar that I still have installed as plugins show up there. So what I want to see is what shows up for you under filters, Skylum, right? And if it's not showing up there, okay, you may just need to go back to Luminar to reinstall it, okay? In order to do that, when you're inside Luminar, and you may have already done these steps, Mark, I don't know. See you, Mike. Take care. If you've already done these steps, okay, and it's not working, then I, I'm at a loss, okay? So in Luminar, if you go install plugins, it should show that they're already installed like I have here. Just click uninstall on both, but particularly Photoshop, and then reinstall it again, and then done, and then close all your apps and relaunch them, okay? So once you've uninstalled the um, plugins and reinstalled them, okay, then come back, relaunch Photoshop and see if it's there. Okay, so it should be there. Well, I'm going to close this one and not save it because we don't need it. Okay, so close Photoshop, relaunch it. Let me know how that goes, Mark. Okay, uh, what are we doing next week, Rob? What's our topic next week? I've totally forgotten. Maybe Rob can come on to. We didn't do a poll today. Rob, what's our topic for next week? I'm looking it up. Uh, we have street photography next week. Street photography. So I need to find, there it is. Okay, so street photography next week. Um, I've already gotten a few submissions. So remember to send in your submissions for street photography. Um, I'm actually judging a competition right now for a camera club in the Okanagan and one of their topics or their themes for their competition was street. So I've seen a lot of street photos this week. So thanks everybody for joining. Mark says flower editing was very helpful. I'm glad. Lots of great tips today, even if they're, the subject is not a flower, right? So using the copy and paste, using the sync in Lightroom, um, and you could do the same thing in Luminar. Okay, There's also a sync and copy and paste in Luminar. So we did lots of different things today, including fixing and cropping. Uh, if you want to watch a more extensive video on cropping, there is one of our previous lives where we did two hours of just cropping tips. Okay. Rob, if you want to share a quick link to that one, and if you're watching the replay, we'll have a link to that in the description area below this video. So submit your images using digitalphotomentor.com forward slash live. There will be a form and information there on what it's all about and how to do that so that you can send in your street photos for next week. Isla says, more flowers, please, soon. <laughs> well, I hope there's more flowers outside soon because I don't want any more snow. I've had enough snow. So, yes, hopefully more flowers. I love the idea of tilting to fix composition. And that works great when you have subjects like flowers where you don't have the horizon, right? Tilt to your heart's content. I do. <laughs> You're welcome, Nancy. Thanks so much. just a link to the previous live. As a matter of fact, um, I think I actually have it right here. So I am going to get it myself. I already have it, Rob. So there's the, the link for the live that we did cropping. So I've already done it because I was in there looking for next week. Thanks, Julia. Have a good week. Deb, Linda, thanks everyone. Okay, I'm signing out. If you have any other questions, put them in the comment area below if you're watching this replay. And I hope you got a lot from today's session. Take care and we'll see you next week for street photography.